Today, we're talking about masks and Figma. Masks and Figma are a very powerful visual design tool as they allow you to reveal layers or images through the shapes of another layer or another object. Figma contains two kinds of masking tools. The first is masking via a shape layer, and the second is masking through an image fill. Let's just dive right in. So taking a look at the first kind of masking tool we have is the shape layer masks. This is the most common and most flexible masking uh, tool in Figma. In this example, we've got here an image with a few text layers and a blob. I would like this image to be revealed only in the shape of this blob. So I'm gonna first kind of center it up and then I'm gonna scale it so it's bigger than the blob, that way I have something to work with. You can think of masks, if you haven't used them before, as those cooking tools that would allow you to use certain shapes in your dough. You kind of press them in and they only contain the shape of the, of the cutter, right? It's the same kind of idea. In Figma, once you've got your layers where you want them, go ahead and group up the objects in which you want to be masked. So I know I want the image, this image layer here, as well as the blob to all be in my masking group. So I'm gonna select both those layers and then we'll group it with Control G, name this to mask. And now we've got this top group, which is our image with our text layers and then this back vector here, which we can name blob, and that's gonna be our mask. Now, like I said, the first kind of masking is the layer masking. So this will take place in the layer panel as well as obviously visually here on the canvas, but to interact with it, you can right click on the object in the layer panel. You also can right click on the object out in the canvas. However, I find it's easier to interact with it mostly in this left hand layer panel because you may not be able to select your mask behind all these other objects. But go ahead and select it, right click, and press use as mask or control alt M. And then immediately you'll see that our image layer here is already masked and it's working as expected. But take notice in the layer panel that the icon has changed for the blob and it has drawn a line out going up until the end of this mask group. This is letting us know that everything above this layer will be masked by this blob. So if we have other layers above this, they as well will be masked. So if we were to make a text layer, say test, make this really big, 100 pixels. All right, we can see that it is above the blob. We can see the line has continued upwards. And if we go ahead and move it out, we'll see that it is indeed included by the mask. It's getting cut off. But if we move it below the blob layer, it now is outside of the mask. So just be aware of the ordering of your objects. That's also why it's recommended to put the objects you want masked inside a group because the masking of the, the shape will stop once it reaches a parent group. That way you can contain what is actually being affected by the mask or not. The second kind of masking is something you've actually probably been using already because it's not true masking, it's an image fill on a shape. Right here again we have another blob and we can go to the fill panel, press plus, and you can see we have our normal fills where we can do our gradients, our solid colors, but we also can select image. And we can see already that there's a checkerboard that's being cut off in the shape of the blob. We also can come in here and uh, select an image and we can see it being occluded by the shape that this is filling. If we wish to move this image like we were doing with the other masking type, we could change the fill from fill to crop, and then we are given an outline of our image and an outline of the blob. The blob is these uh, little blue control handles in which if we interact with them will affect our blob shape. And then the image itself we can interact with just by dragging and moving or going down to a corner and scaling the image up. All of the resize controls that you're used to do take effect on this sizing. So holding shift will contain the aspect ratio and without it, you can do a free transform. And then when you're done, go ahead and press X and you'll see it all take place as normal. The reason I mentioned this isn't true masking is this really is an image fill. So we can come back over and we can stack other fills on top, like a solid color, lower the transparency. 
And this was what happens as well when you drag and drop an image onto the canvas. All it's doing is it's making a rectangle that is the aspect ratio of the image that you dragged on top and then changing the fill to be that image. So it gives you some flexibility to work with images, but it is limited to just the kinds of things you can add in the fill panel. The first method is the most flexible, but also maybe uh, overly complicated for what you're trying to do if all you need to do is mask a different image. But these two uh, masking tools in Figma allow you to replicate many different modern design trends as well as complex designs that require occlusion in different areas. It's pretty straightforward. Practice, use it. There are, like I said, some modern design trends that are using it. These blobs, for example, I've been seeing all over the place as well as uh, headers that are angled or have uh, curves to them or those, those wave headers. Using Mask and Figma will allow you to replicate those designs that you're seeing. Coming up in the Figma for Beginners tutorial series, we are going to go over the pin tool as well as the vector network that Figma uses for the pin tool as well as file sharing and prototyping. After those skills, we'll do another design practice video and then we will continue on with the series. Until then, I'm Max.